Perfect. Welcome in guys, tipsforgamers.com here, I'm Dada Recrib, and in today's video we're going to show you guys how to get unlimited caps and speed up time in Fallout Shelter, and yes, you're going to get unlimited caps, you're going to be able to speed up time, time is irrelevant for you, so we're going to go over four main categories in this video, the first one's how to name your dwellers, pretty simple yet very effective, uh, the second part we'll go over is how to speed up time, and we really mean that, speed you can make 12 hours 30 seconds uh, very easily, the third part we'll go and is how to get the unlimited caps and the fourth one is how to find the bowler hat guy so i'll be ignoring the bowler hat guy until i come across him uh until i start talking about him so if you hear him just ignore him the other thing is guys is we have a lot more tips on our website than what we're going to go over in this video so make sure to click on the link in the description below after this video uh, to check out more tips on fallout shelter so we're going to get into our naming system guys and show you how we name them it's very very easy uh, so I could tell by their name where they work, what generation they are, who they're married to. I could tell all of that. It, 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 their last name guides me on everything about the dweller. So the name, the last name is always, the first letter of the last name is always based upon where they work. So strength dwellers work, they do well. We actually got this bottle cap guy. We saved him. In a mission him and this root beer and they come and visit us and give us uh give us some skosh every now and then but anyways back to the naming um and they talk too that's the other thing back to the naming so the first letter is always where they work so strength dollars work here the second letter is is based upon the alphabet right it's based upon if it's a it means they work in the first station Okay, so A, all of them is the first station. If it's SB, that means they work in the second station. SC, you get the gist. Okay, and the, the last letter is what generation they are. Okay, and when you get down the, the generations, I can even tell who they're married to, and I'll show you. Because it's very obvious here, I know who they're married to. It's S SA1, SA1, right? They're both married. Okay, and it goes here. I, she's a bad example because she's married to a hitman. So hers is kind of different. She has AA, so it's ag anything with agility works in the greenhouse, the diner, anything with food. Um, and then she's a new, which means that she's married to a hitman. She's first generation, uh, and that's just the way it is. This girl here is a beast, and the bowler hat guy found you. You can find the bowler hat guy based upon uh, the sound. The sound really gives it away where he's at, and you can locate it very easily based upon the sound. Uh, we'll kind of get into that here in the in the future. Moving on here, same thing would be PA, it'd be P, and then it's the first station of the the purification station or the water uh, treatment station. So it's P and then A, first generation. Same thing if we go to A here, A B. So they work in the second. A generation of the, the garden or the greenhouse or the diner or anything like that and then it's first generation now when you start getting to their their children right so i could i could tell here she i don't know why i put this sa here i think i was messing i messed up somehow or whatever but it doesn't matter so if it's a female and she's ready to be married or just in general i'll put uh these around her her original name so she is an sb which means that that's her you know her mother and father were there she's second generation she's married to an sa and well the that actually might be his name yeah so it's samuel okay so and that's when you get to that's what it was that's why i was confused and that's what i was talking about here is once you get to you know get in the future where they get married you need to know who she's actually married to the only way you could do that when there's multiple generations is i put in for her middle name I put the first two initials of her husband, okay, or the first two letters of his first name. So it'd be S.A. Samuel, and she'd be S.A. So I know she's married to an S.A., which is Samuel, and he's the only Samuel uh, that we have. And same here is A.A., uh, and then a b and then i didn't put his initials but i never really moved them but that's basically what i do so it's very very simple and that is how we name our dwellers all right guys so let's talk about speeding up time how do you speed up time that's the key of this game well understanding this game you have to understand that the game is built upon time right the whole thing is structured on waiting it's a turn it's a time-based game six hours and 52 minutes until they get to the mission we have another one of our hitmen out there he's been out for a day one day five hours and three minutes now i don't have that much time to wait 
I really don't. So you have to understand what the game is built on and how the game actually is structured by the developers, aka Bethesda. Well, time is based upon the individual device. Okay, and that is a key point in this. It is, oh dear God, just kill him, please. You get out of there, dude. Get out of there. You're gonna die. Let's send some of you in here. This is an entire family here. This is, we have one family that does our entire, uh, I don't know, get out of here, dude. You gotta get out of here. You die, it's gonna cost me 2,000 coins. I don't care. I'm over it. Doesn't matter. Anyways, let's go back to the time-based game here. Okay, so it's based upon the individual device, right? That means that if you change your device's time, it changes the time in the game. So we can see here 16 hours, right? Let's see if we can make that go quicker. So I'm just going to grab my device. Some tablets, like on my tablet, I can actually manually change the time. And uh, instead of changing just the time zone. Okay, so I'm sitting at Mountain US in, ca in Canada time. So I'm gonna go down and I'm actually, I'm not even gonna switch it in here. You can switch it in here and it'll just load. But instead what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to save and exit, right? So I'm going to save and exit, and then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to this island, and then I'm going to bring back up my Fallout Shelter. And you guys can keep doing this. You can keep this process up, and we'll actually show you how to do that so you don't get confused, because this is probably one of the most confusing parts, because you're actually manipulating what the game believes. So you notice now, when I, when I log back in, everyone needs to be leveled up. Well, you can level up everybody doing it this, and the game thinks I'm hours ahead. So when I click on it, they're there. 16 hours just passed into no time, okay? He ended up dying. I'm reviving you, man. You're just too badass. I can't not revive you. Uh, there's no way. That's my boy. Um, and then our other guys are there. So that's one way to do it. Now, how do we continue to manipulate time? Well let's do it we don't even have to save at this moment in time let's click this up bring at bring back up the date and time i don't know why it's not showing and what i'm going to do is i'm going to go back and i'll just click on this one right the farthest one from it it doesn't really matter and you're going to hear a sound stop right you're going to hear a certain noise stop and that's when you know it works it hasn't happened yet sometimes it's quick sometimes it's not well one way you can speed up this process is i could go and rush a room I'm still waiting for it. It's actually taking long. There it goes. Did you hear that? The sound stopped. So right there, I know that this works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit save and exit. I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back to my time here. I'm going to put back on that island there. Remember that guy was out for 23 hours and he was, we just revived him. So he's coming back into it. Now, 16 hours took me what? Maybe 30 seconds at most. I mean, you know, I would say it takes me usually around 15 seconds. You know, I'm not a time expert when it comes to this, but I know it's no more than 30 seconds. So once again, everyone needs to be leveled up. We got people that are maxed. Um, so, and let's see, he's back. Yay, he's already back. Now we can collect them, welcome them in, and I got to get more storage. But anyways, this is how you guys... Uh, can manipulate the time in the game and you can make things so much quicker for yourselves You really don't have to wait. I mean honestly this entire thing that I built here. I built this for this video by itself and it, it, it took me about three days maybe and that's not even playing it the full day So this is how you guys manipulate time and we hope that you guys can utilize this and uh, crush it, you know, be the best Fallout Shelter player you can be. Okay, so let's talk about how to make unlimited caps. So the first way we're gonna make unlimited caps is obviously by doing what we did there, where we send guys out in the, the wasteland, we speed up time or send them out onto a mission, speed up time, and then, you know, get a bunch of cash that way. And that's an easy way to do it. Now, the next one is this grid technique that we actually created here, because you gotta remember, the percentage, whatever, if it's fighting percentage, if it's a fire, fighting, whatever it is, it's based upon the actual room, right? And you want the room to be full, okay? So let me show you here. Let me show you one I haven't rushed a room yet on. So if I go to rush this, it's an 18% incident, right? I earn 19 caps, 21 XP. Now let's go to a larger room, okay? So I have these big, huge rooms. If I click on this, Let's click on the right one, make sure it's it. 19%, I earn the same caps. 
I earn the same XP as that small room, okay? And let's say, what is this right here? Yeah, that's right. That's right, you can't hide. Uh, anyways, it's the same percentage. So it, the percentage is also the same if you have an incident. So let's say I have an incident, a rad scorpion, I have fire, whatever it is, it really won't matter because of the fact that the room has to be full in order for it to get you, you to have the greatest percentage or, or the greatest chance to win, right? So if a rad scorpion comes in here, these six people are the same strength as these two people in this individual room they these two people can kill a rad scorpion just as fast in that small room or put out a fire as fast as these six people so it's actually going to benefit you to have this grid system that we set up here so let's show you how this works now if you rush a room and fail it does hurt the happiness of your uh, people here but not enough for it to matter you can easily get that back up this is so easy to get back up to, by just making them healthy you know things like this very very simple and i don't know why these guys i don't know what happened to them and why they all got so depressed I, I think i left it on the game on for a while walked away and i just didn't realize it and they were getting attacked and i wasn't healing them uh so i think that's what happened but anyways so let's go to one here. I already rushed them a few times, but I'm going to rush them. I at 24,800. Okay. And remember that time is on your side. You can't rush this room right now because of this. So I'm going to activate it. I got a 28% chance of an incident, right? So the time or the actual percentage is on your side. So I'll even rush them. Even if they get high 66%, why not? I'll rush them. If I get a rad scorpion, I could take care of the rad scorpion incredibly fast. Even if it's a fire here, incredibly fast. I'm just going to heal these guys uh, just because I'm just going to heal them. So watch how fast they put out this fire. Let's, let's just keep rushing as many rooms as possible. And that's why I go four sections down. And let's just keep going. 28% chance there. I've already rushed the rooms just a little bit. So even if I fail, not a big deal. Oh, uh, there's a fire. Big whoop. Oh, there's a rad scorpion. No big problem. We'll eventually get to a rad scorpion. I'll show you. We'll kill a rad scorpion faster than you can believe. And a rad scorpion's, you know, pretty difficult. But I'm telling you, the percentage is all based upon the room. And that's the whole key. That's what the game is rewarding you on. The game rewards you on rushing. That's the whole reward. Okay, so I failed. Big whoop. They're still getting XP. And they got a fire. Nah, that's not a big deal. I'm just going to heal them up. Fire's already gone. Nice. Let's try their children. 19% chance. Okay, I passed that one. Let's go 29% chance. I'll, I'll go up to as high as a 70%. I really don't care because... Uh, the happiness will come back. I'm not too worried about that. And the happiness really doesn't get crushed too, too bad either. Let's go. Room's on fire. I keep getting the room on fire. I'm not actually getting the rad scorpion yet. Which the rad scorpion, I don't mind at all. Because it's so easy to kill. Because of how you have these rooms set up. 38% chance. I still have a higher, greater opportunity of winning. And so I've had a bad streak so far. And that's okay. It happens. It's the name of the game. You're going to have bad times where you're not going to succeed all the time. If you're trying to succeed all the time, it's a very horrible way. If, you're, or if you are afraid to fail, I guess I should say, then it's a horrible way to make money. Okay, you should never be afraid to fail in this because it's a great way to make money. Okay, so I'm going to just speed it up. Let's say I want to do 28%. Failed on that one. I'm just having bad luck today. Room on fire. Seems like a bad luck day. Oh, I did the wrong person. Why are all of you guys... What happened to you guys when I wasn't around? They all were just getting abused like crazy. But you can see... I mean, I put out, a, I put out the room... Or I put out the fire so quickly. Let's go again. Let's rush. Failed again. Man, boys, my luck is trash butthole today. Okay, so she's got a baseball bat. So here's a red scorpion. Dead. He's already dead. And, and people are very scared of what happens when you rush a room. Why are you scared to rush a room? I don't get it. You're winning no matter what. You're, you're going to keep winning. 
and the way I have this grid, how many times can I keep rushing this room? And I've had bad luck, and 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 you know, and I haven't made a, a lot. But you could get to where you're making, you know, three grand or three thousand caps every three minutes. You know, let's do it again. Let's go to it. And this is also a great way to fill this up quickly. Let's go to this one here, 28% chance. And I'm just going to keep going up them all. Uh, let's see here. I passed again. Let's go to this one, 29% chance. Success. Now we're getting some success because remember that the percentage, the chances are on your side. Eventually you will win. That's the whole thing. So you get to your times where you lose a lot and you get your times where you win a lot. And you're going to end up making a lot of money. I mean, you think about how much I already made. How long would that take you to make that same amount in the uh, wasteland? Right? It'd take you a long time. And, you know, people saying, oh, it takes you a long time to kill those things or to put out a fire. No, it doesn't. It doesn't take you long at all. You can see my guys are walking through it like nothing. And the percentage keeps going up. And I'm, I haven't even touched this yet fully. I'm, I'm, I've been losing a little bit more than I probably should. The percentages aren't necessarily on my side. Uh, but at this moment in time, but it's worth it to keep always doing it. So, uh, I want to just make sure, you know, this one's failed, man. I've just failed so much lately. I have had some serious bad luck and it really is. It's just bad luck. There's, there's nothing else besides that. Let's go to this one. 48% failed on that one. I'm not too worried rad scorpion let's give you a better gun and if your guys don't really have a good gun i'll give them like gun like this and her gun's fine let's want to make sure she's healed and the thing is dead God, sometimes the clicking on this drives me nuts anyways uh that gun i'll leave them with that gun not a big deal but let's see this one again let's go 58 percent i'm willing to take that risk I got the success, so it paid off for me. Let's go again. 68%? Why not? Let's just do it big. Ah, oh, failed on that one. Poof. But even those high percentages, it's definitely worth it. So I got a fire here. Big whoop. This guy's not very happy, but I could get his health back and his happiness back super quick. Let's see if I need to collect anything down here. Got to level up some people. And this is also another great way to level up a lot of people. But anyways, I'm thinking you guys are starting to get the gist here on rushing him. You can see it's really not that bad. It actually keeps the game more entertaining as well. You can rush for a long time. And I didn't actually make that much money compared to what I usually do. I usually burn through these pretty quick. I'll do all the 19% first. And then I'll just go around in a loop. Do the 20% the 20%, then the 29%. And then I just keep doing that. Next thing you know, you're sitting at 10,000 more caps than you had previously. And you're also leveling up all of your people and when you come across the bowler hat guy i actually just heard him but i'm too busy collecting this stuff anyways when you come across the bowler hat guy what you're gonna do is you're gonna actually move your screen so you want to actually get somewhat close and i could tell he was somewhat over here but you'll hear the sound boom 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 and if you have headphones on you'll be able to actually hear where he's at based upon you could kind of grab something do a little bit of circle and then you'll start to hone in on where he's at based upon the sound because it'll go in one ear or the other if you're in a headphone now if you're playing on a device you really it doesn't give you one side or the other that much uh, you can kind of hear it fade or get louder that's the best way or the other way to do it is to put your your mobile device on um, vibrate okay and it'll vibrate when the guy is there and so that's another way you guys can do it you'll hear your your device vibrate and then you know the bowler hat guys there and it's onto the search another great way is look at the elevators as well if you see a green that means someone could be in the elevator and you could quickly search through and then go from there. So that's a great way of detecting the bowler hat guy into making a lot of money as well. I hope that you guys learned something from this video. I hope you guys now crush it and you guys absolutely obliterate this game and you become the best Fallout Shelter players that there is. Make sure to go check out our website, guys, tipsforgamers.com. We have a link in the description below. And on top of that, subscribe if you're new. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next video. Take it easy, everyone.